Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to my channel. And today I'm super excited to show you guys this new product that I'm reviewing, which is the Quad Seda hat for Raspberry Pi or Rock Pi. So let's get started. <laughs> Now I want to thank All Net China for sending this unit over to me for review and I'll leave all the links down in the description below to where you get the script to get it installed to how, what the installation process is. Now I also have two announcements to make. One is that I have a gaming channel with my friend called Pandemic Playground and I'm still in the works of getting it over to a thousand so please head over there and subscribe. And also my second channel where I do my gaming, Nova Spirit Gaming. I'm actually converting that channel to more of a Linux gamer. Basically any game that I could try to get working on Linux or optimizations for Linux, that's where it's gonna be heading. So be sure to subscribe to that channel as well. Now with that out of the way, let's get started with this guy. All right, so here we have all the pieces that come shipped with the kit. So the first thing we're gonna look at is this quad SATA hat. This allows for four two and a half inch drives to go on top, but if you actually wanted to use three and a half inch drives, this version, which is the 1.2, allows that. As you can see, it actually comes with the four pin connector for 12 volt input. Now this also comes with its own power supply. So you're gonna to have to connect their power supply to the top connection port over here. And you also have this 10 pin that actually connects the bottom of the board to the top of the board for the top hat. Next, we have this top hat that we were just talking about. And this actually includes a little LCD screen, a fan to exhaust out the heat and a button on top. Uh, this button actually allows you to change the display to see what you want to display and also uh, other functions that you can program into it. Now what I do like is that they have this really low profile heatsink that works pretty well. It also has a notch dug out just so you could sit the CPU perfectly in there and it works really well. Now this connects to the quad SATA hat so there's a little pin for it. It also includes the 10 pin cable we were just talking about and this really cool USB to USB connector. It connects the bottom two USBs from the board to the top USBs, the top hat. And they painted it white, so it actually looks really good with the design. Uh, now you have the baseboard. Now keep in mind, uh, you have to screw these things in yourself. And I kind of like over torqued one of them and I broke it, which is fine. I'm gonna have to do a tap and die set and just take that out later in the future. But keep in mind, these are brass. So if you torque it too much, it's gonna just break. So be mindful of that. Then you have this uh, acrylic that goes on top that actually hides all the stuff internally, but it allows for the screen to still display the information through this acrylic sheet. The two and a half inch drive um, holders, I would say. Now there's one that has the notch cut out in the front and that's where it should sit in the front of the USB. So this way you don't knock into it. Last but not least, we have the actual case itself. Now keep in mind, this is a pretty heavy unit. If everything's all attached, it's got some weight to it. So keep in mind when you're putting that together, as well as I believe this whole thing is made out of aluminum. I could be completely wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's aluminum. All right, so let's start building everything. All right, so this is it. We finally finished putting this together and you might've noticed I didn't put the case on there yet. And there's a reason for that. We still gotta set this guy up. Now over here, you have the SD card slot. So once you enclose it, you can't stick in an SD card anymore. And two, because of the display adapter that I'm using, which is my HDMI cable is a little bit too short. So it doesn't pass the case. Even though the case has cutouts for the holes for the HDMI, this just doesn't reach it. So I leave the case off just to set everything up. Now I am running Raspbian Lite and you can download that off the Raspberry Pi org website. And the initial setup that I need to do is actually enable SSH and let the initial resizing of the file this happen. And then we could get into the rest and get everything set up through SSH. There are a couple of ways that you could go forth with this as soon as you get it set up. It's either A, manually set up everything, which is uh, make your own RAID and set up Samba for the shares and stuff like that. Or you could issue a one-liner command to install OMV. Now, OMV is a way easier setup to get everything working with the RAID and shares and everything. And I do recommend doing that uh, if you are new to this. But if you are gonna do this and you mainly set up, you're gonna see that you have a little bit benefit as far as the CPU usage. It's gonna be a lot less CPU usage on idle if you're not running OMV. All right, now that we passed the initial uh, boot up with this guy, uh, we're just gonna log in once. And the default password for Raspbian is pi, username Raspbian. So we're gonna do a sudo rpi config. No, raspi config. 
This way we could get the SSH up and going and then I can log in through SSH and finish everything else over there. So I'm gonna head over to, where is it? Interface options, SSH, and yes, I would enable that. Now keep in mind, if you are using Wi-Fi and not planning to use Ethernet at all, you're gonna have to set up Wi-Fi here right now. Otherwise, um, we could just go and reboot the system or actually power it off and I'm gonna hook it up with the ethernet and finish the configuration from SSH. So they actually have a website for this device itself and there's a command that you actually have to use to get the board working. If you notice right now, nothing is on. The hard drives are not on, the LCD is not on, the fans are not kicking in. That's because this software is not installed yet. So as I was saying before, we're gonna to have to connect to our Raspberry Pi and you're gonna somehow find an RP IP address to it through your router or something like that. Let me make this a little bit bigger so you guys could see. Now the first thing I'm going to do is go into my Pi, which is um, SSH Pi at the IP address of it. And the password is Raspberry because I didn't change it yet. All right, now that I'm logged in, oh man, I accidentally clicked that. I just need to grab this command paste it into a terminal and give it about five minutes. It's going to download all the stuff. Now I do recommend actually saving that script because in case if this website is not working or it's down, you can't install this or get it working at all unless you run that script. Now there are a lot of settings that you could do. So let's browse down the website a little bit and you could see that there's the pictures of it, the GPIO pinouts, the fan controller, but there's an actually config file that you could go through that you could adjust the levels of the fan speed at whatever temperature it's supposed to be. So if it reaches 50 degrees Celsius, it'll be at level three, which is 100% power, uh, it says up here. And you can also program the keys. So every time you click, it'll slide through the images. They call it the slider. So you could basically get the information of IP address and then you click it once again, CPU information, click it again, hard drive information, stuff like that. Then you hit it twice and then it'll switch. Switch would turn on and off the fan. So if it gets too loud or you wanna be ultra quiet, you can just switch off the fan. And then press, which I'm not sure what this is, uh, you could actually reboot or power on and power off through this whole entire thing, which is really cool. Then you have the timer, uh, how much is it to press? So if you, I guess, yeah, press hold for 1.8 seconds, it'll power it off and press it again, I guess it'll power back on. Then you have twice, which is within 0.7 seconds, you hit it twice, you get the switch. Then you have the slider and it automatically turns around. Now, what I do like is that the rotate feature. Currently, it has it so it's facing towards the USB port. So downward would be the USB port and that's where you're reading it. Now, I like it the other way around, so I would actually rotate it, I mean, to, to see the other side. All right, now that this has been done installing, you should hear that your hard drives are clicking in and turning on. It's still not ready yet until you reboot the system. So I'm gonna issue a sudo reboot. And as soon as that boots up, you're gonna see your LCD display come on. That means everything is all set up. Once that comes online, that's it. You are all set to the next step. Either you wanna manually install Samba and create your RAID or install OMV. Okay, to check out if the hard drives are working, you could do this. System CTL, Status Rock Pi Service. And you can see it's on. Now, if I go over to LS Dev SD, you should see that there's four hard drives connected, SDA, SDB. So everything's all set up. Everything is working as it should. So the next step, now that we have that all set up, is to install OMV. Now, if you don't want to install OMV, you could take it from here and install your RAID and then install your Samba. Otherwise, we're gonna issue this one line command and I'll leave it down in the description below, which will grab the OMV plugin and install it onto our Raspberry Pis. This is the new method of installing it. There's no more ISO images. This is how you install OMV now. Once you hit enter on that, this literally will take half an hour. So go and grab a cup of coffee and then come back to it later. All right, now that it's booted, we should be able to get to the GUI and somehow the IP changed by one digit, so it's fine. Now, 
the initial login is admin and the password is open media vault. Remember to change that actually in the management. So this way you won't forget. Now that everything is accessible and this is my Raspberry Pi, I should be able to set up the rest through here. Again, remember to change your web administrative password so you don't leave it as default. Now, as far as um, raid management, I do have a raid that was set up already and I am gonna be able to set up my shares. So if I go over to file system, I should be able to see that I have this and all I have to do is just mount it. All right, once I hit apply, so it knows to boot it up every time I turn on the system, it's gonna apply those configurations and that's it. Now I have to head over to share folders just so I can make a share, hit add. And because I don't have any device selected, you see how this is just, I'm gonna name this share as rpi-nas. Uh, permission, I'm gonna allow everyone to read and save. Now that I have that set up as a relative path, I could just head over to my SMB and enable the setting. Go over and save it, obviously. Head over to share, add the share that I just created, which is that rpi-nas make this public guess allowed and save hit apply for everything just so it saves the configurations for the next boot all right now i should be able to see my share so i'm going to head over to browse network and here you go raspberry pi smb and i see my raspberry pi nas anonymous is fine i should have some files in here raspberry pi nas and I'm going to transfer a file over just to see how everything works. So I'm going to open my downloads. I actually download an MX Linux um, ISO. Over here, I'm just going to hit copy, head back over to my Raspberry Pi NAS and paste it right here. Oh, I can't paste on that directory. I got to paste in this directory. Oh, okay. There you go. It popped up around 60 megabytes, which isn't too bad, but overall it isn't that bad and it seems to be working. Maybe it might get a little bit better speeds if I saturate the drives a little bit more. Just to give you guys a little bit of an update, um, the transfer speed was actually affected because of this computer and not the Raspberry Pi setup. Now I managed to get up to 90 to 100 megabyte transfer speed using my Windows transferring to the Raspberry Pi, but somehow this guy was stuck around like 50 or 60. And I actually used this to transfer to my regular NAS and it was still around 50 or 60. So there's something going on over here with this guy that I haven't had a chance to really look at yet, but yeah, the transfer speed was able to get up to almost 100, sometimes it peaked at 107. Just to give you guys a little bit of an update. So now back to the video. But it seems to be all right. It's, it's not doing the full speed that I wanted to right now. Not too, I'm not exactly sure what the configuration is. Maybe it's because of OMV, like maybe taking up some processing power. But overall, I'm very satisfied with the setup right now. Now, if you guys have an issue with setting up RAID because um, the newer version of OMV does not allow you to create anything with a USB, you will have to manually create this RAID, which I did. Now, to do that, you would have to issue a command, which is this command right here. Now, this command will actually uh, create the RAID for you, sudo md amd and dash zv dash l5 level 5 um, cluster at 64 n4 and then pls and then you want to call the device dev slash md0 and then these are the drives that you're going to be popping on now you might or might not need the number one at the end so be mindful of that but once you stick this command in it'll actually generate a raid a generator file system with that raid with make fs ext4 once you're done with those two commands your omv will pick it up over here and then you could do whatever you need to do with it now i'm running a raid 5 you could run a raid 1 you could run a raid 10 whatever you want to do but yeah ultimately this is what you're going to be able to do to get the raid going now if you're only running two drives or one drive then you won't even need this or if you want to separate the drives and have them individually with four different shares that's fine as well you don't need to do this step but if you're going to raid and put all the drives together then that's the command you need to issue. And again, I'll leave it down in the links below. Also, I'm gonna leave this on my website so I have a little write-up about it on how you do this. 
So in conclusion, I actually really like this unit. It actually looks really good in the enclosure and it gives you that little display on top to tell you like the stats of your IP address and how much space you have left remaining. I also like how the front looks like with it indicating with the hard drives are being used or not. Ultimately, this is a really cool NAS. It's actually smaller than the other NASs that I have that takes the three and a half inch drives, obviously. But uh, ultimately, I really like this product. Now, um, I would recommend setting it up on your own instead of having to use OMV because OMV seems to take a little bit more CPU usage on idle. So it creates a little bit more heat. And I do notice that the CPU temperatures on this is like five to 10 degrees higher Celsius wise when you're running OMV versus running just stock with Samba and your own RAID. Now, the wattage wise, it only takes about 15 and sometimes it peaks around 20 on the wattage usage. So that's pretty good in itself. But then again, you are running four, two and a half inch drives. Now, one of the things I did notice about this guy talking about heat is that yes, even though it has a fan on top just for the air to come out, there's really no area on the bottom or on the sides for it to you know kind of suck in. So it does struggle with air a little bit and it does get a little bit warm but it still maintains the temperature to around 50 degrees celsius as far as the noise goes um, you could adjust the fan speed according to the temperature that you have it at so it's as loud as you want to make it but the fan does make some noise if you want to keep it low just change the range around a little bit in the fan then you could kind of keep it as low as possible but ultimately the fan does make some noise another thing i do recommend is uh, having a shutdown timer on the hard drive so the spindle would stop spinning after like maybe a 15 minute time period this way you could save the heat and the hard drives from constantly running and that's one thing i would recommend with this uh, setup now i also really like that the top has that LCD screen that gives you the information that you need to know how much storage you have left the IP address and the CPU usage I, I really like that with that switch that's programmable for you to switch around the screens and also do something else with it Overall, I do really really like this product and I am actually gonna keep this on my shelf over here Possibly or maybe somewhere else as a backup unit for my videos and stuff like that Anyway, if you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button if you guys have any questions about this unit or You want me to test something that I didn't show in this video? hit in the comments down below. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.